Howdy folks, hope you're all having a great weekend and welcome back once again to Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate Demon Hunters where a funny thing happened on the way to a Bloomspawn outbreak. It's actually something I've been waiting to happen for quite some time and it finally did, although not in the way I was expecting. One of our brothers has been called to join the Paladins. He will require time off ship to complete his training. Have you taken leave of your senses? All of your knights are essential to this campaign. This is an important rite of passage for our brother. A paladin could prove useful, even if we must do without him for some time. Commander, if this knight insists on proving his valor, why not direct him to fight the Bloom instead? Inquisitor Waifu can bite my shiny metal armor-plated ass if she thinks she's going to get in the way of Purgatal Fool completing his advanced training. We must not stand in the way of destiny. Such a waste! Alrighty Roo, all of my knights get plus one maximum willpower for the next 20 days, although this does mean that Purgatal Thul is now on assignment, but hang on. Purgatal Thul's going for paladin training. I would have expected that to be just a car Iolanthus. You know, he's the tank. So my ranged heavy weapon support guy is going to complete tank training. Well, I guess I'll take it. This is my first advanced class unlock. You've got Paladins, who are basically big-ass tanks. You've got Purifiers, who are kind of like Purgators, but more flavor-focused. You've got Librarians, who are elite psychers. I mean, all Grey Knights are psychers, but a Grey Knight Librarian is a psyker on steroids. And then you've got Chaplains. And Chaplains are pretty badass too, although they have more of a focus on buffing your squad and debuffing the enemies. But I have yet to see a chaplain, a librarian, or a purifier. This is going to be my first advanced class. Right, anyway, bloom spawn outbreak. All kinds of different coloured seeds. My ship speed's up to 140%. What do we got here? Win the mission without using willpower. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to get some grimoires to uh, boost my research speed. Tier 2 Terminator armor. Uh, all right, what are my other options? And of course, they're all spread out, so I could probably go for these two, and I'd have to miss the other one. Um, okay, there's a higher corruption level here, and it's not covered by my prognostic cards. I'll get servitors for completing this. Win the mission without mastercrafted armor? Yeah, that's never going to happen for the glorious deed. Um... And the armory requisition rewards are pretty crap. What about this one? Again, corruption level 3. Again, not covered by my prognostic cars. Win the mission without using willpower. That's not going to happen. And I just get bonus requisition for this. And the rewards are kind of shit. So I think we're going to go for this one. Just before I get there, however, like literally one day before I get there, I get an upgrade to the Augurium which gives me another prognosticar that I can use to attune to a planet of my choice, which will also cover all of the neighboring planets with the prognosticar bonus. And as you can see, the prognosticar bonuses are really, really nice. So I need to make sure I get the maximum possible coverage. Maybe if I were to put it here, that would actually cover one, two, three, four, five, six systems as well as the one that I'm heading to, which would be very nice. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Which means that when I arrive at this mission, the effective corruption level will be reduced by two, and I will get all of the nice prognosticar bonuses. So I can actually see what I'm fighting. And I'll gain one willpower every time there's a warp surge. And thanks to that prognosticar coverage, the warp surge on this mission has been knocked down to a mere 20% per turn, which is nice. Blightlord Terminators. <laughs> well, shit. And Purgator fools away on assignment. Oh, great. Well, I'm not doing this without using Mastercrafted Armor, so I can kiss goodbye to the uh, glorious deed bonus requisition that comes with it. So, well there's going to be a spot open in the squad, 
We have to destroy a bloom spawn spreader. Oh, I don't like those missions. They're nasty. I'm going to get 15 servitors for completion, which is good because I'm running low on servitors, but I do at least get the prognostic car coverage. So I was training up a bit of a B team here uh, with some of the noobs. Oberon Isad, a rank 3 interceptor for example, and a brand new apothecary Justinian Tides who again rank 3, but I really don't think rank 3 recruits are going to cut it for this mission, not with Blight Lord Terminators. And... But as you're going to see in future videos, I mean, I, I put one level of upgrade into the barracks purely to get a couple of extra slots for recruits, but I haven't built up the barracks beyond that to increase the rank of any new recruits because honestly you really don't need to do it. In my opinion your servitors are best spent elsewhere rather than increasing the rank of recruits gained through the barracks because you have to pay requisition points for the recruits but you can also get higher level fresh recruits as armory access requisition rewards on successful completion of missions. Um, which is just a much more economical way of gaining new recruits at a higher rank. And all these rank 1 and 2 recruits that I have, I can just send them back to Titan and get a refund in requisition points, which are going to be much, much better spent elsewhere. So, for this mission, since Thule is away on Paladin tracking, I'm going to be going in with Iolanthus, Storm and Han. And that does leave one spare slot, and I'm really not sure who to put in there. I don't really want to be going in with two Apothecaries, or do I? I've got the B-team Apothecary, Justinian Tides. He's only rank 3. I figured if I'm going against bigger enemies, I might need more healing. So I'm going in with double Apothecaries, but honestly, in retrospect, I don't think that's such a good tactic. I mean, it's a very reactive rather than proactive tactic. Dealing with the damage that they inflict on you is not bad, but it's better to kick their asses before they can inflict the damage in the first place. So for that reason, I probably should have gone with my B-team Justicar, Justicar who is at least one rank higher than the B-team Apothecary, but I did go in with double Apothecary. On the bright side, I suppose if Apothecary Tides does get badly injured, I don't really give much of a shit because he's the B-team Apothecary, and I'm probably not really going to need him. Oh well, we'll see how it goes. What's the worst that can happen? Target identified in remote location. Astra Militarum forces will be alerted by our agents and mobilized. It's too late for that, Dominus. The Bloomspawn's already engorged. Our strike force has precious moments left to stop it. Right, so I've done one of these Bloomspawn spreader missions before and they're not pleasant. I'm on a timer. I have eight turns to reach the Bloomspawn spreader and kill it. But oh, I Emperor. can extend that timer. There are blue spawn vents scattered all over the place. They look like poxus seeds. There's one. If I disable that vent with a melee attack, there's one over there as well, I think, but that's way too close to a nasty. I think we'll, we want to avoid that. You don't want to be getting tied down with unnecessary fights. You're here to kill the bloom spawn spreader. But every time you knock down one of those vents, it extends the length of time that you have to kill the bloom spawn spreader by one turn. So that was the spreader all the way over there. There is also a bloom spawn there, but you don't have to kill that, even though it's listed as an objective down there in the bottom right corner of the screen. You don't actually have to kill that in order to complete the mission. You just have to destroy the spreader. So ideally, I'd ignore that bloom spawn entirely and just divert around it to get the spreader. Here's the problem. Marines in Terminator armor aren't as mobile as Interceptor Storm, who's the only Marine on this mission, in power armor. Marines in power armor can jump over gaps that Marines in Terminator armor cannot. So if all of my Marines were in power armor, I could avoid that bloom spawn, but they're not. So I kind of have to deal with it. I mean, it, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm pretty sure Interceptor Storm can probably handle one bloom spawn himself but there are likely to be patrols here as well and i am on a timer so yes commander let's get the noob moved up to join the rest of the team i don't want him too far behind when i do trigger this which is about to happen there goes iolanthus 
and there it is. So it's got this swarm of flies thing around it that reduces the damage it takes from ranged attacks. So, I mean, that's not going to be a problem. I'm just going to charge in and hack it up. There's another vent over there. And again, I mean, there's vents all around. I'm not going to have a problem with a timer. Get in there, Iolanthus. So there goes all of its armor. And uh, yeah, we'll hit it again. Iolanthus, with the armor that he's wearing, using his psychic abilities to do four strikes, doesn't increase the warp surge meter. Let's get the good Apothecary Horn in there. Give it a good stabbing with his... I don't even know how to pronounce the name of the melee weapon that Apothecaries use. That works both as a melee weapon and as a medical device. Northesium or something like that, whatever. Right, intercept the storm, get in there. Hammer hand. Hammer hand doesn't guarantee a crit, by the way. It adds 100% crit chance, which I've succeeded. But you can have afflictions that reduce your chance to crit to below 100%. We'll get the kill with the new boy, because he's the one who really needs the experience here. Another battle right. ends in triumph. Scratch one bloom spawn. And I was heading in this direction anyway. We're gonna go and take care of some of these vents to extend our mission timer. Oh, and there is a patrol over there, although it's not heading in this direction. Unfortunately, while the bloom spawn vents do look like poxus seeds just lying around, you don't get a point of willpower for destroying a bloom spawn vent in the same way that you would for a cleansing a poxus seed. And there is actually a poxa seed lying right there. No, not that. That's a bloom spawn vent. And the marine and terminator armor isn't going to be able to climb up there. So instead, we're going to send Apothecary Han over to pick up that spawn seed. And it's one of the new ones. The, there's a special name for them. I don't know. It's one of the red seeds. He did get a point of willpower back for that, and we have recovered a seed. And I can send Intercept the Storm, the guy in the power armor, who does have the mobility to get up on that ledge, to give us nine turns now to destroy that bloom spawn spreader by shutting down these vents. Sadly, despite my best efforts to avoid any unnecessary patrol entanglements, that patrol is actually heading in the same direction as me. So I am going to have to deal with it. So we've got a blind hauler who just walked straight into... <laughs> well, thanks for that. <laughs> it looked like he walked into a plasma cell. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab that seed. But no, I can't. It's not in range. Ah, all right. Okay, fine. No problem. Well, I'm going to have to deal with the patrol. The Blight Hauler walking into and triggering that plasma cell was actually really good for me because Blight Haulers do not have a lot of health, but they have a shit ton of what armor. And now it no longer has a shit ton of armor, thanks to the plasma cell detonation. And I can get rid of the rest of its armor thanks to a handily placed grenade, courtesy of Apothecary Han. But first, I'm going to move him up to here, where there's hard cover in two different directions, which means they will not be able to hit him, except with indirect fire weapons. And then we're going to strip the armor from the Plague Marine, as well as all of the remaining armor from the Blight Hauler. It won't knock the Blight Hauler back, it's too big, but it will knock the Plague Marine back. Unfortunately, despite the fact that this planet is covered by my prognosticars, my stratagems are all locked because Inquisitor Waifu is having a bit of a hissy fit because I sent Purgatal Fool away for Paladin training. So, no Quicksilver, no Gate of Infinity, none of that good stuff. Instead, I am warp charging Honor the Chapter on yes, Intercept the Storm. Just a car Iolanthus's signature ability, which gives the target three bonus action points and a bonus point of willpower. And I just need to get Storm up as far as I possibly can. That's as far as I can get him. I still have five action points left. And they're just inside teleport strike range. Uh, except they're not. There's only one of them that's actually inside range of weight. Him and no. <sighs> so I can strike one of them. 
and it's not the blight hauler. It's just outside of range. Shit. All right. I guess I'll kill this one. And then end up behind him. There's no point in warp charging it. With one Plague Marine. I do get the action point back for uh, using a teleport ability. I can now grenade the Blight Hauler. It doesn't kill it, but it does knock the second Marine over here where I am more easily going to be able to kill him. So we'll finish this first one off. Executed. Is that guy now inside Extractor Servo Skull yes, range? Commander. Let's see. No. No, he's not in range of uh, Apothecary Tides. And Iolanthus has a Medicaid Servo Skull. If I move this guy up, he should now be in range. I mean, Storm can extract the seed on a melee crit, but this is a guaranteed extraction. And it doesn't cost any action. So we've got the seed out of him before we kill him. Because Storm is going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely going to kill him. Uh, that is not in question. Oh, that's a Poxa seed back there. Not a, what not a vent. Real? Okay, no. Focus, Jingles. Kill this guy first. I've got three action points left, which means I don't need to spend willpower yes. because it will take three hits to kill him. Wounded. Oh, and he's stunned. Awesome. So now we get an execute. So everybody gets a bonus at this point, which means the Blight Baller is screwed. Because now I can just shoot it. Right, control dealt. More willpower for Intercept the Storm, who's, aside from him and Iolanthus, are the only ones that are actually using willpower so far. Another willpower point back for Storm, and another patrol on the way. I mean, I could deal with the patrol. I have nine turns remaining. But let's not. It's completely unnecessary. I don't need to do it. So we'll just move the rest of the boys up and we'll go for the Bloom Spawn Spreader. Seven turns left. Avoided all of the other patrols and the Spreader is on the top of this platform. And it will not be alone. So I want to try to get everybody as close as possible together before we trigger the encounter. So ideally, they can Ready all focus sir. their firepower. Yes, sir. There it is. And there's its friends. Throne of the Emperor. That one's massive. We That's what she yours. said. <laughs> that thing before the demons you. <laughs> yeah, the old ones are the best. Okay, so the top of the stairs is covered by Overwatch. That's less than good. Brothers, there are also reinforcements right coming in through these warp rifts. And there are five reinforcements left, which means I'm going to get fresh reinforcements every turn until I kill that spreader. My stratagems are locked because Inquisitor Waifu's having a hissy fit because we sent Purgatory Fool away for Paladin training. So, unless I'm very much mistaken, this mission ends immediately, regardless of how many reinforcements are left, or how many warp gates are open, or whatever. This mission ends immediately as soon as you kill the Bloom Spawn Spreader. But if I get everybody up there, which is going to cost action points, and don't kill it, and it has something like 30 health, in this phase I will be cut to pieces by all of these reinforcements. I mean there are plague marines, there are blight haulers, and there are reinforcements coming in through that warp gate. So should I deal with some of the reinforcements first? Because 30 hit points is a lot of damage to do and I'm gonna to have to expend a lot of action points to get up there before I can even start hitting it. Ordinarily, I would just use the Gate of Infinity strategy and teleport everybody up there, killed the Bloom Spawn Spreader, end of the mission. Back home in time for tea and medals, but I can't do that because Inquisitor Waifu is having a bit of a hissy fit and all of my stratagems are locked out. But here's the thing, even if I wanted to deal with the Spreader first, I probably ain't going to have enough action points to get everybody up there and still have enough action points spare to do enough damage. Kill it in one turn, and I would have to walk everybody through My that Plague Marine's Overwatch in order to do it. So, 
I think I need to deal with the Overwatch first. So, warp speed biomancy on Interceptor Storm. Here's Commander. This gives him extra movement and extra melee crit damage. Now, how far can I get him and still have a respectable number of action points left without triggering that Overwatch before I teleport him up? If I move him to there, I still have five action points left. Yes, so that's where we're going to move him, and it doesn't trigger the Overwatch. Now the teleport strike. So we're going to deal with the Blight Hauler and the Plague Marine, who also is carrying a Poxa Seed. You know what? It'd be nice if I can get a melee crit on him and um, recover the Seed, but it's more important that I remove the Overwatch and just kill him. The enemy is wounded. Right. He still has three action points. I can guarantee a crit with the hammer hand ability because it kills him and recovers the seed. Another foul seed claim. And then two attacks will kill the blight hauler. Okay. So there's the immediate problem taken care of. He's got one action point left, he's standing right next to the plague spreader and he's exposed in no cover with a whole bunch of enemy marines around. So we're using his last action point to trigger his Aegis Shield. Now, how far can I move and still have actions left? We can shoot from here. I may as well pump a willpower point in to do a cybolt and bonus damage because at this point I've got nothing better to spend the willpower on. Plus, Interceptor Storm gets a reaction shot off if he's in range of anything to get shot at, so that's good. Although he does only get the one per turn. Now then, Apothecary Han. He does still have one frag grenade. And he can hit the spreader and one of the marines. And the marine doesn't have any armor left. And it might, because if you're only in power armor, the knockback from a frag grenade will actually knock you back. Terminator armor, you're too big, bulky, and heavy to suffer a knockback. And he could shoot from here, but remember you get penalties to damage if you're at over half range. So I think the grenade is probably the better idea. And he can definitely get both of them. I just need to find the right spot. There it is. So grenade it is. The good thing is the spreader doesn't have any armor. As remember, if something has bonus armor, like that Plague Marine who didn't get knocked back over the edge, and you don't kill it in your turn, it gets all of its armor back. So I'm not going to kill the spreader in this turn, but it's not going to get any armor back because it didn't have any to begin with. Now it's the enemy turn. The spreader does a nasty, which isn't good. And then we get the reinforcements through the rift. Well, after these marines have done their thing, what's he going to do? Just going to shoot. Oh, hazard spray. Nasty. Yeah. Apothecary Tides is plagued. That's not actually going to be a problem. This guy's healing himself. And is going to shoot. He is. This is fine. I left Iolanthus there for a reason. One, he's got the most armor. And two, he gets a reaction attack against anything that comes out of that war bridge. Oh, and there's a plague marine with a hazard spray. That's bad. Yeah, they survived. But it doesn't matter. The bloom rises, another warp rift opens, but it doesn't matter. There's no warp surge, and we're going to keep getting reinforcements until we kill that bloom spawn spreader. But now I'm going to kill the bloom spawn spreader. So I'm surrounded by enemies, and it doesn't matter. Hammer hand crit attack. And don't forget, he's doing bonus crit damage as well because he still has the warp speed biomancy on him. And. Yeah, we might as well go for a full strike. But nothing else to spend the willpower on. Mission over. You see, if I'd had to clean up everything after killing the spreader, I'd have been screwed. But you don't, so it's all good. 
so we've got a shit ton of whatever the hell those red seeds are. Two requisition for destroying the bloom spawn spreader. What do I have available to spend that requisition on? Yep, it's all garbage. <laughs> it's all rank one stuff. I mean, it's not garbage. Some of this stuff is pretty nice. I mean, that's not terrible armor. And that's not a terrible weapon. But I'm far better off saving the requisition points to increase my requisition access and start getting tier two and tier three stuff. So yeah, we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna waste requisition on any of this. Did I get any promotions? I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, the noob apothecary ends up with a promotion. Yeah. Oh, with the set the storm got a promotion. Nice. Rank nine, by the way, is maximum rank. Um, it was a kind of a waste taking this guy along on the mission because I'm probably never really going to use him again. I mean, I can give him the ability to wear Terminator armor, give him some servo skull upgrades, whatever. I can spend the ability points. It doesn't really matter. I'm probably never going to use him again. In fact, I'm probably going to just return into Titan and get a requisition point refund on him. And um, I'll probably get more requisition points back if I have actually promoted him. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. But honestly, I really don't care. Interceptor Storm, however, and bearing in mind, these are the last two ability points I'm going to get to spend on this guy because rank 9 is as high as it goes. You can improve your marines further, but it's going to be through armor upgrades. These are as many ability points as they're ever going to have. So, where am I going to spend these? The support fire discipline isn't too bad because this guy's always going to be in shooting range of enemies because he's going to be standing right next to them sticking his sword into their face the melee discipline though bonus crit i think is definitely the way to go you absolutely cannot go wrong stacking as much crit as possible on an interceptor plus that ability 50 percent chance when he scores a crit he gets an action point back and uh yeah i'll also take that for an extra 10 percent crit chance which is really nice there is one ability in that tree that I haven't taken and it's a shame but it's extra crit damage which isn't bad but crit chance is better because when you score a melee crit you get all kinds of useful options to shut down beneficial abilities on the enemy that you've just critted so yeah I think we're good and in one day Inquisitor Waifu pissed off with us though she may be is going to complete research on bloom suppression 2 which is going to reduce the warp surge increase by a further 10% on any systems that are covered by our prognosticons. So that should help us keep a lid on things until we get Purgator Thule back from his Paladin training and we welcome Paladin Thule on board. Picture, if you will, a hulking superhuman clad head to foot in Space Marine Terminator armor with a dirty great big storm shield in one hand and a double-handed demon hammer in the other, because you can wield two-handed weapons single-handed in Terminator armor. And that's basically what we have to look forward to. All of that coming up in a future video. I hope you've enjoyed this one. And as always, be pure, be vigilant, behave.